I think Subaru actually controls the weather because we haven't had snow here in the Milwaukee area for like over a month. And then all of a sudden they send the cross trek wilderness and it snows, it snows and it's fun. Yeah, one of these days, man, one of these days we're gonna come to a parking lot It'll on a Sunday nice. to film a car and it won't be cold and dark and wet and miserable. But that day's not today. We chose to live here. Welcome everyone to Downshift. My name is Paulo. And my name is Matt, and we are here with the newest Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. We spent some time with this car in its base form a couple months ago, and that yes. is far and away the segment leader in terms of sales. But here we are with the full send off-road wilderness trim, and we're gonna see the best in the rest. Let's get into it. <laughs> So let's start with covering what the wilderness stuff gets you. Well, to begin with, you get half an inch of suspension lift. It's now got about 9.3 inches of ground clearance. You've got revised bumper up front for a better approach angle. And the same thing out back for a better departure angle. Look at that. There's very little overhang and it's kind of humped up. So definitely the best clearance that you can get along with this 9.8 or 9.3 inches of clearance, which again, main competitor being something like a Bronco Sport. The Badlands trim of the Bronco Sport is only gonna get you about 8.6. So this is about half an inch or more, almost a full inch uh, of additional ground clearance. You also get real skid plates and protection underneath for things like your engine, transmission, and oil pan. And you get these gold accents everywhere for your recovery hooks up front. You also get more specific LED fogs Everything has a texture to it, even the grill. You can see the grill is no longer the dolly shape. You also get this matte hood because of course, if you're cresting something, you don't want a lot of reflection coming into your eyes, bouncing off of the hood. Again, around the side, a little bit more aggressive wheel arch cladding, and you do get very specific 17 inch wheels wrapped in all-terrain Geolander Yokohama tires. You also get a wilderness badge on the side. Again, some protectant on your wing mirrors gold accenting for your roof rails. These are about 700 pounds max static weight limit. And then of course, additional cladding down here because this is where the front wheels are gonna throw up rock chips and things like that. And you do have big cross trek in the gold. And of course we talked about that revised rear bumper here, way pulled up, additional gold recovery accent points, and then Subaru across the back with a wilderness logo. And of course, blacked out cross trek all wheel drive. And the interior also has some specific wilderness stuff like gold stitching in your door cards, faux carbon fiber on your door cards, faux carbon fiber on your dash, specific uh, weather mats with some rock and mountain decaling. You've got some additional wilderness headrests here. It's squishier on this part. The embossed part is pretty stiff, but you've got gold accenting here. And then the StarTex interior, which is water resistant, that's standard for your wilderness. You've also got almost a Kevlar looking shift boot with again, gold stitching, gold accenting in your steering wheel, gold stitching in your steering wheel, and some additional detailing in the back. And starting with the rest, we'll start with the trunk. Now the trunk space here, we're gonna talk about it in context with the Bronco Sport Badlands because it's kind of its main competitor. With the second row up, you're looking at about 20 cubic feet of space. Now the trunk actually has some cool character to it. You look here and on the detailing to the sill, you've got a little mountain range here, but you also have a little cross trek that's traversing the mountain range because this is of course the wilderness, which has its own unique kind of little accents in here. You've also got extra large cup holders, which somebody told me in the comments to the normal Crosstrek video, that is for dog bowls, which I guess would be very on brand for Subaru, but you get a little privacy cover. You can fold the second row, not from the trunk. You have to go up in it. Well, I guess if you have long arms, you can fold it from up here, but with it folded, you're looking at about 55 cubic feet of space, which is pretty good and is going to be more than the Bronco. With the seats up, it's less than the Bronco. With the seats down, you're looking at more than the Bronco. So pretty good. You also don't get a power trunk. I don't totally expect it, but maybe it would be nice. And some lighting. Now the Wilderness gets the bigger engine on offer in the Crosstrek. That's the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated boxer four cylinder, 182 horsepower, 178 pound feet of torque. It's not a huge amount of power, but it's kind of adequate for this size of vehicle. Going to all four wheels through the CVT, zero to 60 is done in just about eight seconds. So again, not gonna set your heart on fire. Don't really know why you expect it would would do something like that, but the only thing that I kind of wish about this engine option is just the fact that 
it is just one engine option and there's no turbo and a lot of people are going to take this hiking and off-roading and adventuring and altitude is the enemy of naturally and naturally aspirated engines i'd like to see a turbocharged engine here to maybe add a little extra boost pressure to kind of normalize and keep that power uh, more accessible once you start to get into altitude also maybe a hybrid system i think that would help with some of the fuel economy and also with some of those power gaps if you get into altitude and then there's the fuel economy now as you can probably imagine with sitting up an extra half an inch and with some more off-road oriented tires and all the cladding here there is going to be a fuel economy penalty you're going to get about three to four mpg less than in the normal cross track so what we're getting about 27 mpg combined or you would uh, at least according to the epa so it's not bad but it is just not as good as you would get from a normal cross track it's about three to four less than a normal three cross to four track. less but small price to pay for looking this cool right <laughs> What do you mean? You what do you mean? Ah! You never scream when you're cold? Not at my homie's head. Sorry. <laughs> and then in terms of technology, it's okay. It's not amazing. It's kind of par for the course of what we've seen in the other Subarus. That is to say that it's fine. Here in the Crosstrek, you're not going to get a head-up display. In your cluster here, you do have the gold accenting that we talked about that's specific to the wilderness, but it is just a TFT screen in here. We've got a couple different views, so this is kind of the stuff that you'd expect to see in a fully digital cluster, but you still have plenty of information. Again, it's fine. You get into here, 11.6 inch screen, it's running Subaru's Starlink or whatever they want to call it. It's fine, the graphics are a little old, it's a little bit laggy, as you can kind of see, but you do get wireless Apple CarPlay here, which is nice, and you do have stuff like a wireless charger that you can use down here. So, is it groundbreaking? No, but is it fine? Yeah, probably. What about the cameras? How do those look? That's the thing, though. You don't get 360 cameras. You do get a reverse like camera. A fish, fish eye. One, it's right? not great, but the thing that bothers me more than this is the fact that this is the off-road wilderness, and in the outback that we had, that had a forward-facing camera, and I think that would be a really nice thing to have here for your off-road wilderness spec. Yes. Woo! All right. And now, since we're below 10 miles an hour, or whatever it is, I can select snow and dirt on X mode. This car is, in fact, on X Games mode. We're going to do a little sighting lap. Woo! It's going to be nice and slippery. Nice and slippery. <laughs> this should be fun. I think Subaru actually controls the weather because we haven't had snow here in the Milwaukee area for, like, over a month and then all of a sudden they send the cross trek wilderness and it snows it snows and it's fun <laughs> there we go gyros up and then i also need traction off can i do that from here no oh no i can't turn it off while it's in snow mode whack okay anyway here we go we're gonna do a little sighting lap and then maybe we'll do a full send. So here's where the Yokohama Geolanders, that extra half inch of suspension travel, <laughs> some protection underneath, that's where it all is gonna start to pay. Pay dividends, and I've hit my face on the ceiling. Grip is going to be a problem. <laughs> but will it be too much of a problem? Let's get up this. Yes, we've done it. We've crested the hill. So, approach. Approach angle, revised from the bumpers. Should we try the middle hill? The middle hill is kind of tough on these cars, so maybe we skip the middle hill, just because I'm not going to have grip breaking downhill, and there's a like a rock garden at the bottom, so I don't want to send the, yeah, see, there's a bunch of rocks down there. I don't want to send the front of the car into a rock on my last day with this thing. I'll let somebody else do that. It's a big old puddle here. Oh, and I've almost missed it, <laughs> because I have no grip. Let's see it. Big puddle, wow. Look at this thing go. Look at it go. 
Well, this is high in the middle here. Getting a little scraping. Still getting traction to the wheels. You can see it lighting up on the screen. <laughs> this is cool. All right, this seems pretty dry, so it shouldn't be an issue to get up. Struggling for grip, struggling for grip, but that symmetric all-wheel drive system working well. <laughs> I think I may be being a little hard on this car, but it's fun. This thing is good. It's doing well. Honestly, I brought the traction boards. They're in the trunk because I thought maybe we'd get stuck. Doesn't seem to be an issue thus far. I still think if this thing had the turbo engine, it'd be kind of a fun rally car. Okay. Oh, these are kind of beaten down, so we're not gonna get real big articulation tests, but I think that's fine. That's not really what this car is about. So this is kind of where I'd wanna see, like, you know we talked about that front 180 degree camera that the Outback had? I'll definitely tripoding there. Back wheels for sure up. No creaking, no flexing from the chassis. Good little car. I mean, this thing doesn't weigh a whole lot, but still, it's a unibody. To do some articulation like that, it's not its main intention. I'm gonna try to get up on this boulder here. Yeah. Crabbing. <laughs> I'm impressed. This thing's doing well. It's easy peasy. I don't have to be in like a low, low range gearbox. You know, CVT's working well. All wheel drive system is, it's sorting it all out for me. I don't have to do like anything. This is really easy. It's a really approachable off-roader. If you've never off-roaded before, this would, be, this would be your best friend. It's super easy. Just throw it into X mode. You see dirt, you see snow, you put it in snow and dirt. Looks a little deep, maybe put it in deep snow or mud. We probably could be in deep mud or snow. Let's see what that does to the traction here. <clears throat> so that turns traction off. That makes a lot of sense. Because when you are in that deeper stuff, you do want to get the wheels spinning and spinning and spinning. So that will be helpful. Now we have a downed tree here. All right, I put the camera on to show you because we got stuck by a log up there. We're still in deep snow and mud. That does not turn the parking sensors off, apparently. But I don't want to go back through that jumpy rumpy bit backwards. I'd like to do it forward. This is, if I'm gonna get stuck, probably where I'm gonna get stuck, because I'm off the trail here, dealing with snow. But yet again, completely fine. I'm impressed, I am impressed. I think these soft rotors might deserve a little bit more respect than they get. <laughs> it's fun too. Speed, a little bit of speed. Yeah, I think with the turbo engine, a little bit better tires, this would be a fun rally cross car. Really fun rally car. And then more specifically with towing, you can get a tow receiver installed here and towing on this wilderness is gonna be up at 3,500 pounds, which is a huge amount. A lot of that is thanks to some additional CVT transmission cooling, but 3,500 pounds from a subcompact SUV is really, really impressive. And then the rear seat, we're gonna start with the door specifically because they open just about 90 degrees and I really like that, it's nice and practical. You do have a mountainscape on your little kick plate here. You do have the wilderness specific floor mats, really nice, lots of coverage and does feel real off-roady. StarTex is the only interior you're gonna get on the wilderness. It is water resistant. You've got the gold accenting. Some of the gray two-tone gives it a little bit more personality. I'm 6'1", sitting behind myself, a shocking amount of knee room for someone of my size in this in a class like this and i even have headroom i'm not hitting my nub maybe bit maybe a bit barely but the only thing that i'm going to ding them on is no rear air vents think of the dogs they want to have the air vents usb c though usb a some pockets overall it's a great back seat and then some of the more specific interior detailings as we get to the front of the cabin here. Uh, you do have two level heated seats here, no cooled seat, no memory seat, but you do have, as part of a $2,200-ish package, a power-controlled seat over here on the driver's side, not on the passenger. That's going to remain manual. But again, StarTex, or whatever they're calling the interior, is water-resistant. You get the same kind of hexagonal patterning in here with the gray and the gold. You do have this hood, or excuse me, this headrest embossment Subaru Wilderness, which is kind of 
hard. It seems like everyone complains that it is hard, and it is pretty hard. But you do have gold accents everywhere. In your steering wheel, the stitching here, your shift boot has like almost a woven Kevlar effect with the gold. And then you've got carbon fiber kind of rimming everywhere. So it does have loads of personality, loads of texture, and it makes it feel a little bit more premium and expensive than it probably otherwise would at this price point. And unique and special, I think. Is yeah, what they totally. Want to and then there's the price. Now, the Crosstrek itself starts at about $25,000, $25,200. To go up to the wilderness, you're looking at about $32,100 or $32,200 realistically. This car also has the $2,200 or $2,270 package that gets you things like the Harman Kardon speakers, which are very good. You get the sunroof, which is kind of nice, and you get the power driver's seat, which is nice. It's very nice. You don't get a power passenger seat. We talked about that earlier. But so then as tested with delivery, this thing's about $35,000. And the reality is that is a screaming value compared to what you're going to get from like the Ford Bronco Sport, uh, at least Badlands, and as well as the Jeep Compass Trailhawk. So this thing is a lot of personality and not a lot of price. Let me get my blenders on. I'm actually going to, can you hold this and you can discount you... code in the description if you want to look as good as me. Subaru Crosstrack Wilderness. <laughs> okay. Screaming. Screaming. In the CVT. Boxer engine. So let's talk about it. Just under 200 horsepower, like 180 something. Yeah, I think I had more in my Honda Accord V6. Oh, I, I definitely had more. It was 200 horsepower in that thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's um, pretty good. So where, where do you want to start? Best? Uh, let's the start rest? with the best. Okay, so uh, my first and second one are kind of like a combo. Um, we talked about it, but I really do like the look of this thing. Again, maybe some might say it's a little childish. I think it depends what color combination you get. Uh, but I think it looks really good. And not only does it look good, but it, it walks the talk as well. It walks um, the walk. Yeah, sorry, it walks the walk. And it talks the talk. And it walks the talk, though. And it goes, <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> it. The bumpers have been revised, as you mentioned, to increase the aperture and departure angles. And I just think, you know, it's only half an inch taller. Um, but it comes on all terrain tires like it's it's really capable and it, and it looks the part as well Yeah, I would agree I think the closest thing that has like actual off-road chops is the Bronco Sport Badlands Which of course we've had to go yep. in and it's it's decent um, But I think between the two this thing has just like a load of personality from the interior and exterior styling I just like that yeah. about it um, Your other one was cheaper than competitors. So this thing uh, as tested is about 33 2 33 3 which is I think a pretty good deal because mm -hmm. a comparable Bronco Sport Badlands is like 38 so yep. several thousand dollars more exactly it's pretty insane um, but yeah the other one was just that you like the look of this thing yeah which I kind of said so yeah what did you have any favorites that weren't the exact same as mine no <laughs> because we agree <laughs> on everything and we never <laughs> fight because we're best friends um, but no to be honest like I do like, I was surprised by how much I like uh, the way that this thing handles. Like the suspension mm. is a little bit stiffer than in the normal Crosstrek. It does feel like I can rotate a little bit more. Subaru's all wheel drive system is really nice. I mean, I like all these things that you're getting uh, as standard or for free. So you are just getting a lot of capability out of the box. Yeah. And I think that's really where it shines is at a value proposition of like low $30,000. Starting with the dislikes, my list, and it's it's this right here yes one it's the <laughs> lack of power we mentioned it when we kind of first started rolling that it's under 200 uh, horsepower yeah uh, which is just crazy how like little that is um, i really wish they had a turbo option here i think they would sell a lot more if they had that yeah and i think that my my mentality with that is the naturally aspirated engine i think is fine here but to have the turbocharged engine option would help it in altitude yeah. because it's got 182 horsepower at sea level but when you start to climb in the mountains you're starting to get close bit. to like 150 mm -hmm. 130 depending on how high you are and presumably the wilderness you're going to go hiking with your dog or your partner and that's in altitude most yeah. of the time so i do think a turbo normalized engine would be helpful here or having some electrical help from a hybrid system yeah i think would be good agreed that obviously adds to the price though but right. i think it's well worth it and i think people would pay for it the third one is the text the tech that comes with this yeah. and just how kind of dated and laggy it is i had a lot of difficulties trying to connect my phone to it <laughs> which was you were very on the phone with me just like screaming just venting. and swearing yeah it's just because it's just so frustrating to use but yeah. again you know for the price point it's really hard to to come up with things that 
you really want to grill this thing on. So, I mean, I did have to really search my brain and, and rack it to try and come up with that list, but those are just the three that I had. Yeah, I think exactly what you just said is, is really my major takeaway here. It's like, it, it kind of feels like when we were in the tracks, right? Where it's like, okay, I could complain about this, I could complain about that, but when you think back to the fact that, oh, it's so affordable and it's right. so inexpensive, you kind of start to dismiss some of these things. So, yeah, it would be great to have a turbocharged engine, but that adds cost. It'd be great to have a hybrid, but that adds cost. It'd be nicer to have, you know, a transmission option, but that could add cost and complexity. So. At 33K for the amount of style and personality and genuine off-road prowess here, mm -hmm. I'm pretty impressed yeah. that they can bring this package and have it do so well, and the Ford is thousands of dollars more. Yeah, no, I agree. So, yeah, I'm impressed. I, we, we've hit this we've hit every <laughs> light every single every time. Every single time. Okay, we well, with that, somewhere else. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Yeah, we'll, we'll thank see you, you the next one. for letting us have a go. Yeah, we'll see you then.